Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. In a recent video, we talked about nitric oxide and how to get more of it from leafy green vegetables and beets. Today, we're gonna talk about nitric oxide in our upper airways or our upper respiratory tract. So basically, we're gonna talk about nitric oxide in our nose, in our sinuses. And we're gonna ask the question, can you hum your way to sinus health? Like hum. <laughs> Before we start though, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy because this is gonna become very important later on in this video. The upper respiratory tract consists of the nose and nasal cavity, the pharynx and larynx, and the paranasal sinuses. The paranasal sinuses are the frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and maxillary sinuses. Openings to the paranasal sinuses are found on the roof and the sidewalls of our nasal cavity. There's hair-like structures called cilia that line the area. These cilia are like little hairs. They move back and forth and thereby move particles trapped in mucus out of the nose and the mouth. Functioning cilia, believe it or not, are very important. In medicine, we call it the mucociliary escalator. Okay, back to nitric oxide, or NO. Nitric oxide is a colorless, odorless gas. Like we discussed in the last video, it's formed in our body via various pathways. Well, the interesting thing is, nitric oxide is also present in our exhaled breath. The presence of nitric oxide in the exhaled breath of humans was first demonstrated in 1991. Later studies clearly showed that almost all the nitric oxide found in exhaled air originated from the upper or the nasal airways. Only a minor contribution comes from the lower respiratory tract in the lungs. Further studies demonstrated that this nitric oxide is mostly released mainly from the paranasal sinuses. This nitric oxide acts as an airborne messenger throughout the body. For starters, it's been shown to improve oxygen levels in our arteries. As in the rest of the body, we know that nitric oxide dilates blood vessels and is good for the health of our endothelial cells. But unique to nasal nitric oxide, it has been found to have another specialized function, host defense. Intruders, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and tumor cells are sensitive to nitric oxide gas in concentrations as low as 100 parts per billion. Nitric oxide concentrations in the nasal airways are several hundred times higher than this, so they can reach up to 30,000 parts per billion. This nitric oxide concentration is toxic to those intruder cells. Scientists think that this concentration of nitric oxide may help keep the sinuses relatively sterile under normal conditions. Also supporting this theory, nitric oxide may contribute to local host defense by stimulating ciliary motility. Remember those little hairs that go back and forth? This allows those cilia to move back and forth and transport mucus as well as bacteria from deep in our respiratory tract up to our mouth and nose where we can cough or sneeze it out. So cilia prevents infections like coughs and colds. We know that nitric oxide stimulates the motility of the cilia, thereby allowing them to get rid of more intruder cells theoretically decreasing respiratory tract infection. These little itty bitty cilia are crucially important to the overall health of our upper airways. The cilia need nitric oxide to function correctly. Scientists have found that nasal nitric oxide levels are decreased in the following situations. Acute rhinositis or sinus infections, nasal polyps, cystic fibrosis, primary ciliary dyskinesia. So, how can we increase our nasal nitric oxide content? The first way to do it is by nasal breathing. Breathing in and out through the nose rather than the mouth. Pretty simple concept, right? The second way is super duper interesting. We can increase our nasal nitric oxide content by humming. Yep, I said humming. At 130 hertz to be exact. Mm. Humming has been shown to increase the passage of nitric oxide from our sinuses into the nose, thereby facilitating exchange. So nasal nitric oxide levels have been shown to increase greatly during humming, much more than nasal breathing alone. This is probably because humming speeds up the sinus gas exchange. So if nitric oxide is stored in the sinuses, humming can exchange it out of the sinuses much faster than nasal breathing alone. Take a look at this graph. 
The dashed line demonstrates nitric oxide during a single breath of nasal exhalation with humming. The solid line you see demonstrates nasal breathing. You can easily see that humming drastically results in much, much more nitric oxide output. So, even if you really take this humming strategy to heart, you hum all the time, you likely will not take it to heart as much as this one individual did. There's a published case report of a 64-year-old male with chronic rhinosinusitis, which is inflammation or infection of the nose and sinuses. Get this, he was able to reverse his chronic disease in four days, four days, by humming alone. The first day, he hummed strongly for one hour at a rate of 18 hums per minute. Then, for the following four days, he hummed strongly at a low pitch, about 130 hertz, 60 to 120 times in four sessions per day. The humming technique was described as, quote, being one that maximally increased intranasal vibrations, but less than that required to produce severe dizziness, end quote. Inhaling through the nose between humming efforts was viewed as an important feature to gain maximum respiratory benefit from nitric oxide produced by humming. So, what results did this patient describe? Well, the morning after his first one hour humming session, he awoke with a clear nose and found himself breathing easily through his nose for the first time in over one month. During the following four days, he had minor symptoms of sinusitis, but they decreased in intensity every day he was doing the humming. By the end of the fourth day, essentially all of his symptoms were gone. Occasional one to 10 minute humming sessions were needed afterwards every now and then to maintain sinus health, but the patient reported no recurrence. There was one side effect noted, however, dizziness upon excessively strong humming. This was prevented by slightly reducing the frequency and the strength of the humming. So let's just back up a minute. Why do we think this humming worked? Well, 96% of all chronic rhinositis is believed to be caused by fungus. It's a fungal infection. We know that nitric oxide has antifungal as well as antibacterial and antiviral properties. Humming causes the air to oscillate, which in turn seems to increase the exchange of air between the sinuses and the nasal cavity. More nasal nitric oxide levels equals antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral activity exponentially. The humming also appeared to be effective against the common cold. Studies have shown that increased generation of nasal nitric oxide during common colds is associated with fewer symptoms and much more rapid viral clearance. So here's a tip for you. Next time you get a cold, try treating it with humming. Suggestions are to treat it with a half an hour humming session, morning and night for a few days. I don't know about you, but I know I'll be trying that one the next time a cold hits. Another study demonstrated that humming, along with nasal breathing, is effective against allergic rhinitis, otherwise known as inflammation of the nose and sinuses due to allergies. The main symptoms of allergic rhinitis are sneezing, itching, nasal drainage, and nasal obstruction. This study in particular compared the standard treatment for this condition with and without nasal breathing with humming. The participants basically hummed while occluding one nostril and then they switched. They did the humming five times for each nostril and repeated the sequence twice per day. The group of patients that did the nasal breathing with humming had much better symptom scores when it came to sneezing, itching, nasal drainage, and nasal obstruction. So back to the guy who decided to hum his way to perfect sinuses. Let's talk about him for a minute. Turns out he had another problem, preatrial contractions, which is a type of cardiac arrhythmia or bad rhythm of the heart. Well, he reported that his preatrial contractions, or PACs, disappeared on the fourth day of humming. From then on, when PACs occurred, the patient converted them to normal with a one to five minute humming effort. Clearly, we need more studies on this, but maybe humming can help with some types of cardiac arrhythmias? That's food for thought. While we're on the topic of heart and blood vessel disease, this ties in nicely with the fact that reduced nitric oxide concentrations have been noted in a number of cardiac diseases, and treatment with nitric oxide has been shown to be beneficial. Inhaled nitric oxide has been shown to increase pulmonary blood flow, or blood flow to the lungs, right ventricular contractility, and drug-induced pulmonary hypertension. Nitric oxide, as discussed in our last video, 
reduces blood pressure by vasodilatation. So you have a blood vessel like this, it dilates it. It appears to cause relaxation of the smooth muscle in our arteries. It's so powerful that nitric oxide pathways are becoming new drug targets for refractory hypertension, or in other words, hypertension that doesn't seem to respond to your standard medical treatment. Okay, so back to the humming to treat and prevent rhinosinusitis. Reminds me a lot of yoga and yogis clearing their heads by chanting Om. Clearly, if you didn't know it already, yogis are humming, humming. They may not know it, but they are. And there may be more benefit than what they appreciate through their yoga. They're likely clearing their heads by keeping nasal nitric oxide output high, thus clearing their sinuses. So, before you start humming all day every day, just remember, excessively strong and frequent humming can produce some dizziness. So, don't do this while you're driving or doing other activities that require your full attention and concentration. All right, my hum loving friends, that concludes everything I have for you today. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health improvement journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe and let us know what you want to hear about. We love making videos on topics you guys come up with. Until the next time, guys, aloha.